come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Wherever you found us, be it on Apple Podcasts or TuneIn or Stitcher or CastBox or wherever. Hey, why don't you go on over there? Do us a favor. Hit the like or subscribe button. Give us a star rating or a possibly a review. Hey, we'll read those on our show, but all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you and helps us become the world's fastest growing movie podcast ever. 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 Wow. Well, we don't okay. know if that's right. true or not. Right. Could be. I think well, we know it's not true. Okay. Well, no, let's say it is. <laughs> no, no. Why not? Yeah. That, that's our, sure. that's our goal. Wait. About that's I'll our wait goal. for someone to correct us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Let them do the research, figure it out, and say, that's right. no, you're wrong. Because I will raise you this, that you are about to listen to the internet radio superstars, starting with... My knee hurts. Sean. <laughs> Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Holly, what horror classic did we watch tonight? Well, we watched the remake of that. We watched, <laughs> <laughs> we, we watched House of the Haunted Hill uh, <laughs> from Haunted the Hill. year 1999 and directed by William Malone, who we would also know from Ghost Ship. <laughs> No, he didn't no, do he Ghost didn't Ship. Ghost Ship. He no. did a lot of uh, he did a lot of TV. He did Freddy's Nightmares, Tales from the Crypt. He did but, one other big but one. He did, but he did um, the 1985 movie Creature. Yeah. And he did Fear.com. Fear.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's what I was thinking. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is the Fear.com Fear.com. was what he like uh, was able to leverage his success with the House on Haunted Hill to into make Fear. that. Fear.com. Oh, boy. Which was like a ripoff of the ring. It was like this really, yeah, you saw it? It's like, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, the I computer website that kills you. Yeah, this is the 90s, early 2000s. I, I watched all those bad movies. So yeah, That's I Steven watched Dorf? Fear.com. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm back there now. Yeah. Yeah, ooh, yeah. Ooh. Creature Little is though. an alien knockoff that like nails the look of like the exterior of alien mm-hmm. oh, or, or the aliens you know, blue and the, you know sure but man it's it's a rough it's a rough ride mm. creature <laughs> um so this comes to us from a production company called dark, oh, castle, dark castle which is named after william castle william castle who is how would we know who is william castle because i think we need to for the folks out there who don't know who so. he is uh, we need to talk about this this chap the tingler <laughs> the Teen Ghosts. He's the Tingler? House oh. on Haunted Hill. Yeah. Yeah. He was, original. Uh, he was a purveyor of uh, horror um, movies back in the day. In like the 50s. Yes. Very yeah. early on. The original House on Haunted Hill was 1959. Yes. Okay. And that's the one with Vincent Price. Yes. yes. And Elijah Cook and several other folks yes. who I don't remember now. Yes. Yeah, so we are on the uh, 60th anniversary of the original and and a 20th anniversary of the remake. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's been that long. I know. Good holy jeebus. Right? 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Because I saw this, this on opening night. Um, I might have. Oh, how old was I? I would have been 13 at the time. I definitely saw it when it came out on video. It was. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely. I this saw was, it on video. I'm going to say this was the first horror movie poster I ever had up in my room. Oh, yeah. I still have this poster. Do you really? It's, oh yeah, it's still. You I have still a, have a poster from when you were thirteen. Yes, I. Oh, That's definitely. Fantastic. Like I had them up in my room. This was the first one of the first posters I ever had up in my room. Still got it in a roll. It's a pretty cool poster. The it bloody is. handprint good, with all the folks the in it. The bloody handprint. I. This was a. I watched this a lot. Yeah. when I was young. Well, before we get into the cast on that poster, which is all very nineteen ninety nine, William Castle was this guy who was a. Uh, uh, well, I think when he was fifteen years old, he saw the play of uh dracula with bella lugosi in it mm. somehow ended up talking himself into a position where he got to go backstage and meet bella lugosi and bella lugosi like recommended him to become like an assistant or gopher or something sure with the touring company of dracula yeah. and he was able to you know he did that for several years and then he was able to become a um guy at Columbia Pictures, mm. and he started making these movies. But the reason that we remember William Castle is because not only in the movies that he made, do you know why the Tingler House on Haunted Hill and 13 Ghosts and Macabre and all these fucking things like stand out in uh, 
in, in people's minds. Why? Because of the a, gimmicks. He was oh the gimmick. Yeah, right. He would release <laughs> them with gimmicks. That's true. Yeah, his first Emergo movie, and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. yeah, what's yeah, a, yeah. You know what Emergo is? Uh, is it Emergo? Emergo was the, yes. the house on haunted hill yes, gimmick. The skeletons. <laughs> yeah, he flying had a, up he had over a the big audience skeleton and everything. flies up from behind yeah. the screen. The Tingler was um uh what was that called? Because Illusiono was uh Thirteen Ghosts, which basically they gave you the equivalent of the red and blue three D glasses. Right. And so by by wearing those you would either see or not see the ghost. Because it wasn't three D, but it would cancel out like the red right. or the blue. So yeah. you could see that there was a ghost on the screen or whatever. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't remember what the Tingler was called, but he wired up all the seats in the Didn't theater to, to, like, with buzzers. Yes, to vibrate and everything. And so, yeah, he'd shock people. Yeah. During, and his first movie, uh, Macabre, I believe he it, it took out like an insurance policy with Lloyds of London. So it was like when you, if in case you die of fright. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> one of his other movies had the Coward's Corner, which was a yellow box that they put in the, the lobby. If you couldn't take it, you could you could go out and <laughs> crawl into Coward's Corner. This guy was a like showman. Gimmick. He's he like was. the P.T. Barnum. He was, like, he was a personality of, of these movies. Yes. <laughs> I've seen some stuff where he's, he, he does things where he's like talking straight to his audience and everything like that. Like he was a personality. He yeah. was a curator of this type of thing. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, so I mean, so much so that I mean, you know, some people say that Alfred Hitchcock, when he did Psycho, kind of lifted yep. some of the, you know, because Psycho was you can't go in before uh, once the movie started. You right, know, you I mean, will basically not be allowed in, yeah. made it into that kind of gimmicky thing, right? Um, but uh, I mean, obviously, this guy cast a long shadow so yes. much that um, uh, was it Joe Dante who made uh, Matt Joe May Silver? with um, uh, uh-huh. John Goodman. Um. Was it Joe Dante did that? Was I think it? I think so. Maybe. I think it was. Because Matt Nay was all about yeah. like a William Castle type uh filmmaker, yes. you know. Because that's what a good, he, he had the the mosquito or the 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 ant, the mant. The man. <laughs> the man. Yeah. Uh, the half ant. man, half ant. <laughs> that's a great movie. No, yeah, I, I love Matt Nay. It's a great movie. <laughs> Matt Nay's a great movie. <laughs> um but yeah, it inspired you mentioned Joel Silver. Who is he? Uh he's one of the producers on um uh Dark Castle. Uh, pictures. I mean, he's also like the action producer of the fucking nineties, like in the eighties and the eighties. Yeah, yeah, Lethal like Weapon, was, Die yes. Hard, and yeah. everything. Jumping yeah. Jack Flash, Silver Pictures. Jumping. Anywhere uh, there was a big explosion, he yeah. was there. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've talked about Infamous. Joel on this on the show a few times. Uh, God bless that man. Yeah. Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Joel Silver. <laughs> um, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Somehow now we all know Jerry Bruckheimer, but in an alternate universe, it's Joel Silver mm-hmm. instead of, I mean, he's still out there doing so. He produced the Matrix movies and right. all that, but, and but he, he also was, has yeah. like a uh, affinity for horror films, yes, which is, does. I guess, yeah. and um, he co-produced the Tales from the Crypt uh, mm-hmm. movie series, uh, sorry, television Seriously. show. And in the 90s, late 90s, he got this idea, right, that uh, we're going to make this company called Dark Castle. And we're going to start gonna remaking remake, William Castle movies. Which, so can you name the Dark, the Dark Castle movies? Like, what do we get well, out of this yeah. deal? I know the I know the first two was this and 13 Ghosts. Yes. Yeah. It was, those were the first ones. I don't know Shit, after what that. What was the third one? I know those Ghost were the first. Ship? Ghost Ship like was missing. probably. Um, yeah. You shouldn't mention well, 13 Ghosts anymore. House of Wax. If you say it again. It will come. <laughs> God, I the original? I'm just, no, no, not at all. I'm just saying it the now. The Tony Maybe. Shalhoub one. I haven't seen the original. I barely. Re- I don't really uh, remember. Yeah, no, I don't know. So yeah, uh, I did watch <laughs> the original of this one earlier oh, today. That's the other thing. I, before we go off, William Castle, he was also uh, he was the executive producer. He was the producer of uh, Rosemary's Baby. Oh, nice. Yeah, he got the rights to the novel and was going to do it himself. I mean, like, so, like, the huckster, you know, kind of did, like, sure, you know, yeah. actual class. Uh, <laughs> hired Roman Polanski and made Rosemary's Baby. And I think he directed a movie. Did he direct Bug? No, I don't think so. But maybe he produced mm. Bug about the little bugs that would crawl I in. Imagine oh, man. Bugs I worked at the movie theater when that movie came out. And people walked like bug bug? out like of that movie. They Michael were so Shannon. mad. Oh, not that one. Oh, that's what that I'm talking about. The Ashley Michael Judd, Shannon. Michael Shannon right. one. That's yeah. the William Friedkin Judd bug? Yeah. Say, not that bug. Yeah, yeah no, this is an old oh, yeah. one of these just like, like, has bugs. beetles that they their uh, antenna create like a spark. 
And so they crawl into, you know, your car, and then they blow your car up. Oh, great. That's pretty cool. That sounds great. Yeah. Because they came out of an earthquake fissure or something like that. This sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so uh, who are the, the so uh, should we talk about, so House on Haunted Hill, yes. why do we know this title? Why is this like a famous movie title? Uh, because <laughs> because it's one of the one of the six movies you'll confuse for one other movie mm-hmm. that has haunting in the title, or yeah. house, or hill, <laughs> yeah. or hell. Yeah. Because there's a, just a, a faction of these movies. Where does like, this, wait, all is this come this from? Is it that one? Probably The Haunting. Yeah, it comes from a, a novel the called The Haunting yeah. of Hill House. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there was a movie called The Haunting in yeah. 1963. And then what year was this? This is fifth. This is before this. 53. The, the original was 59. Uh, 59. 59. Yeah. The House on Haunted Hill. Starring yeah. Vincent Price. And uh, there's also The Legend of Hell House. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and The Haunting was Hill House. Yeah. But they that didn't actually awesome. use they that title. They didn't use the Probably title. because they were afraid that people would be right. confused with this one, right? <laughs> which came out before it. So um, there's many hauntings of houses, yeah. hills, and hells, and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good combination of where you just it move really it around. It really is. You like yeah. the alliteration. You like the ages. Yeah. We should, be able, we should be able to figure out a new one by the end of this show. <laughs> the haunted house on something hill. On ha- the house. Ha- Damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> on of hill. Uh, on okay, Hell Hill, uh, the haunted house on Hell Hill. There you That's go. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Going into production next week. <laughs> Alliteration is gold. Freak show mm-hmm. production. Yep. 2020. Um, so okay, so this is 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie came out ironically the same year as the haunting. The haunting. Oh Jesus! <laughs> the remake of the haunting. That's right. Fuck. You remember that, that one? I do. Fuck that movie. I hate that movie. I. It was between that and this. Oh, I Jesus. Was like, Thank you for not I was picking like, that I think one. you made the right choice. I was like, I how, so. how mean do I want to be? I, <laughs> I don't I know that I remember that movie at all. It is a god-awful it's, it's piece of shit. Who is in it? It's terrible. terrible. Liam Neeson, Lily. Owen Wilson. Yeah. Oh, Thompson? yeah, I have seen that uh, one. Okay. Lily Taylor. Cass- Lily Taylor, that's it. Uh, Catherine, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Zeta-Jones. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. okay, terrible. I have seen that. Sucks. It's terrible. Re- for whatever reason, I think I was wa- when I was watching The Haunting at work a couple weeks ago, I was just like, what are some scenes from like the remake they did? And I watched Owen Wilson die. Wow. Uh, I watched <laughs> him die, and, and looked at him. I'm just like, I remember this movie, and I remember I fucking hated it. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. It's bad. You know, but, but The Haunting, the remake, yeah. had one of the great, trailers i just remember sure. that like you know this these are its eyes these are its this is its skin these are its bones <laughs> won't you come in or whatever the house. Oh, i don't remember right. that. oh it was creepy as fucking awesome and i was like this is gonna be great and then that was the guy who did twister and speed yeah bond. Bond bond did, bond did it. Really? Uh, yeah wow but it's a case of they basically took the original book and then with i mean the the, the original of the haunting which uh, you've seen that. Right? I just you saw recently, seen? yes. The Haunting's like a really good, like it's a class, like yes. the, one of the great, like, you know, uh, the Mount Everest of uh, it's very good. Haunted House movies. Yes. And it's pretty close to the book. Shirley Jackson, she wrote The uh, the Lottery. Mm. Everybody had to read that in school, right? Mm. Nope, I think no. people nope. did, but I never read it. Oh, wow. I think okay. it was a generation right. before that had to read that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the, you know, so then when they made the remake, you know, it's like, oh, they're going to do a better version. They just basically threw the fucking book out the window and made a whole new thing. A lot of they CG shit. A and lot, of, a lot of pieces really of the house bad. coming alive. Yeah. And, shit. Ugh. and then ironically, like, uh, 20, what is it, 20 years later, uh, they made it again for Netflix yeah. where it feels like they threw the fucking book out, but it actually is. Like, right. kind of, sort of, like, a reimagining. Right. Like, it still feels faithful to the book, The Haunting of Hill House, the TV show, right. which you should absolutely see. That I think we probably all see. fucking fantastic. Yeah. I just still rewatched gotta watch that. Still got to watch it. Dude, it's so good. After Unbelievable, I'm in there. It's I'm, so it. good. That is probably the best horror experience of last year. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I absolutely agree. All right. I'm with you on that. Um, So, not to be confused with The Haunting. Yeah, please, let's not. <laughs> There's this movie called The House on Haunted Hill. Who's in this movie? What why what cements its nineties night its status as a nineteen ninety nine? The entire cast. The entire if, cast. The entire cast. If, the entire if, cast. Yeah. If it wasn't the the stank of the um effects, 
If it wasn't the Marilyn Manson rendition of Sweet Dreams, mm. it's the fucking cast of this <laughs> I think the cast is, the, is the most song. egregious because there's literally no one in this that still really working? still has a career. No, Jeffrey Rush still has a career. Yeah, he's still doing. What's he yeah. doing now? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's he doing other than a Pirates movie lately? Uh, he was in The King's Speech, which was pretty big. That was it was like a good five years or six ago. years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> Yeah, but Jeffrey Rush, I think. I don't at know. This he's Jeffrey point, Rush. I think he's still doing all right. Well, the reason he's Jeffrey Rush, if I remember correctly, you'll have to help me if I'm wrong. Uh, was a movie called Shine. Yes. Right? Yeah, he was pianist. nominated yeah, yeah. for the Academy Award. It seems to me that this, or was it Quills? It Qu- seems to me that this oh, was yeah, the Quills. movie that because everybody, oh, this is what this is your career trajectory in Hollywood. Yeah. You do a bunch of dramas. And then eventually you're in that one drama that yeah. it catches the eye of the Academy Awards. Yep. And then as you're like, ooh, you're getting nominated, then you do the movie that you will be remembered for. Yeah. We're looking but- at you, Jamie Foxx and, and <laughs> fucking Stealth. Stealth. <laughs> yeah. You get Everyone nominated does that. for, yeah, Halle Berry and, and Catwoman. Cat yeah. Yep. yeah. Everyone's got that right after Oscar movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where they're just like, I'm tired of doing dramas. Give me something mm-hmm. easy yeah. to get through. I want to make some money. Yep. And they, they go for the big, the big Hollywood because I mean that was the thing. Joel Silver is a mega producer, and so you know that this movie is going to have like a bankroll to it. Yes, uh, I guess that was the whole thing. It seems like we're missing like after ha- House on Haunted Hill, uh, Thirteen Ghosts, Ghost Ship was Ghost Ship the third movie. All right, but anyway, we can look this up. I looked yeah. it up earlier. I'll look it up now. Feels like there's another one. There's, I mean, I think they did Rock and Rolla. The they did. I do. I like that movie. Out from horror yeah. and yeah. did a bunch of other but stuff. But House, Hon- House of Wax, the Paris Hilton one, was also right. one of yeah. them. Um, That's also another movie with a cast that dates that movie horribly. Jesus. Well, all of these movies are. I mean, they're very. Up but when you start casting moment. people that aren't necessarily actors and just well known, yeah, that's what. That's really when you're getting into dangerous territory of dating your movie. Well, this one had a good, the casting coup, I guess, was getting Jeffrey Rush to play a character called Stephen Price, who mm-hmm. looks a bit like Vincent Price, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, which, then, which wasn't intentional. What? But, no, I don't believe that. Well, no, it wasn't intentional. They, they were going to have him just like dress like a regular businessman. And Jeffrey Rush was like, no. Had, he had this idea that he wanted to dress like John Waters. Which is and then, the same and then, mustache. And, and, yeah. and, they, and they were like, okay. So then they like dressed him like John Waters. And then the director was like, you know you look exactly like Vincent Price, right? And he's like, all right. So they just went with it. Even though the character's name. The character's name, yes. Price. Steven That's why. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, but there was that lots of... Sense. Sense. But that had to be because the, the writer yeah. had to have done that. Yeah, right? yeah, he did. Gothica. Oh, shit. Do we all remember Gothica? Yeah. yeah. Barely. With Halle, Halle Berry? Yeah. Halle Barely? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. And Penelope Cruz? Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. That movie is god-awful bad. I saw that in theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. It had a good trailer. Yeah. Yeah. It did have a good trailer. You know, also a good trailer? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Dreams with Robert Downey Jr. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know why. But that was kind of a horror movie. On a submerged uh, town. That's kind of cool. They were Return to House on Haunted Hill. Anybody seen seen that? Nope. No. And will not. Uh, You know what made Return to House on Haunted Hill like a a thing that I remember? Mm. Uh, Because at the time that this movie came out in the uh, uh, 1999, early 2000s, there was this brand new technology on the market. That was called DVD, the (laughs) Digital Versatile Disc. That's right, kids. Digital Versatile Disc or Video Disc. And it had a technology on it called like a seamless branching technology. And because of that, Warner Brothers got the idea that, hey, we should release the sequel to our epically successful House on Haunted Hill in a choose your own adventure format. Uh-huh. So if you get the DVD of House on Return to House on Haunted Hill, you can choose your own movie. Still not. They also did that for no. what, was it Final Destination 3. I don't think I've ever actually uh, seen oh, yeah, the real Final movie. Final Destination 3, yes. You can yeah. choose. Because I like, chose my ending and it was like over an hour. There's certain ones where you just like, you can choose if these pers- uh, people uh, die or not. Yeah. Like yeah, whether they get yeah. caught in the. Do you go left or right? And they go yes, left and then basically. the fucking thing happens. Yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to watch a movie, man. I don't <laughs> want to do the effort. Like, <laughs> be that involved. I'm just trying to watch a movie. But this was cool, cutting edge. Like, you know. It's just the DVD menu is all it is. Yeah. In the like middle of your movie. Yeah. Which two? Mm hmm. Yeah. Correct. So there you go. Now it's a collector's item. No, I don't know if it is. Um, they did Rock and Roll, uh, Orphan. Oh, shit. Uh, the Hills Run Red, Ninja Assassin, Splice, 
Oh my god, that has that These been done on the freak castle show? Castle movies? These are Dark Castle movies. Like Splices The Losers, also Dark Castle movie. This is when they started to branch yeah, out. Okay. Yeah. Doing yeah. that. Uh, blah, 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 bullet to the head. <laughs> oh wow. And then most recently in 2017 Suburbicon, the George Clooney directed movie starring that Damon. fucked up. Like why is it Dark Castle? Exactly. At least it, Ghost House has the fucking temerity to stick, stick with, with, you know, like going to make horror movies. Ghost movies and We're going to have to do Splice on the Freak Show sometime. That, that is a movie. fucked up. Wild. Movie. Yeah. That's the movie that goes all the way. Yeah. Oh, it's yep. oh, crazy. I, I, You've not seen Splice? No. Seen oh my god. Okay, well look, now we it got it. worth it on the trailer. It does things you wouldn't expect. Oh, I'll wow. say that. I'm all for that. It, it really yeah. wants give me to be some, a David I'm not saying Cronenberg it's good movie. things, wow. but it Yeah, give me something does I don't things. expect. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vincenzo Natale, isn't he doing something now, recently? He did a lot of Hannibal. He came from uh, Cube. Well, he was he the guy good. who did Cube. And then, uh, Cube. then Splice. Oh, he's doing In the Tall Grass. Right. The new oh, Stephen the, King adaptation. Right, right. Right, all right. Your trailer yeah, just yeah, came we'll out see for that. that after all. Um... So the cast, top yeah. to bottom, who do we have in here? Uh, so we have... Um, Let's say Tay Diggs. We start Tay Diggs, that. yeah. That's right. right, who we will remember from... Rent. Oh, shit, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're the right. Wood, I'm getting... No, <laughs> what was that movie with... Um... <sighs> Tay Diggs was in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it'll come to me eventually. I remember... A bit. No, whatever. <sighs> Tay Diggs. Yeah. He, was in, he okay. was in every quote unquote like black movie that came out during that time. No, but there was one <laughs> and like the uh, Best Man Wedding. To, and it was like an, yeah, Angela that. Bassett. I still got a groove back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that the, there it. you go. Okay. I forgot he was in Chicago. Yeah. He's been in a lot of musicals. He was in yeah. Chicago. That's right. right. Mm. Equilibrium. Mm hmm. The Gun Kata movie mm-hmm. with uh, Christian Bale. There Gun-tata. you go. Gun Kata. Gun Kata with Christian Bale. You mm-hmm. said every word I want to hear. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? No, I've not. It is awesome. Is it good? Yeah, it's from Kurt Wimmer, who oh his God. career went sideways. He did Ultraviolet. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, oh, he's that no. kind of guy. Oh, okay. no. Yeah. That's I'll a terrible watch. movie. That's, yeah, I would never watch that movie. Um, um, sorry. So we have Peter Gallagher. Ah, yeah. right. Sandy, Sandy Cohen. Cohen from the OC. Sandy yeah. Cohen. Who used to be like America's the, dad. Well, mm-hmm. he was like one of those guys like Lily Taylor who came out of the 90s, like independent film boom. He mm. was doing a bunch of those things. I think that's where I remember from. Yeah, him and his eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. American Beauty. He was the guy sleeping in while you were sleeping. Right. Right. Yes, he was. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. He was yeah but the there cover. was like some kind of a noir kind of, he was like a lounge singer. I can't remember. Anyway. He has the jawline for a noir movie, that's yeah. for sure. True. Yeah. yeah, he would have the profile. Like mm-hmm. Pleasant. It might have been a no, fucking was, Steven Soderbergh movie. 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 Okay, I can't remember what it was called. We'll just he's been in a, yeah, he's been been a lot yeah. of shit, though. Yeah. And he's my friend Burton's uncle. Wait, <laughs> is he in Sex, Lies, and Videotape? Uh, is he? I think so. He might have been. Yeah, okay. He might be. Yeah. Um. Who else? Uh, Ali Larder. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Final Destination. Yeah, yeah. obsessed. <laughs> obsessed. Oh, yeah. Obsessed. Right. One of my favorite obsessed. movies. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> and, heroes. I mean, right. Obviously, the whipped cream bikini girl in yes. Varsity Blues. Yes. God right. bless yep. her. That's the God one I was thinking of. Yeah. Yep. And Legally Blonde. Anybody? Nope. No. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Legally Blonde. No, it was Heroes for yeah. you. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't watch you, Heroes. You love, you love yeah. Ali Larder. Mm-hmm. If you if you grew up in the nineties. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what happened to her after Heroes. No, I was trying to think of that. I was like, did she do anything after Heroes? But I think Obsession was after Heroes, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, I think, so, I think, yeah. I think it, was, it was, might have been time. during or after. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Larder, what are you doing? I know. What is yeah. she doing? I'm going to look her up. Uh, Famke Jansen. Famke Jansen. Famke yeah. Jansen. Yeah. Uh, Jean Grey. Jean yeah. Grey. yeah. <laughs> is that probably what she... Yeah, I remember she's Golden Grey. Eye, I think, was maybe the first time. Yeah, she's uh, great in Golden Eye. Yeah. She's the villain in Golden Eye. Have you not seen Golden Eye? Zenya Anata. Yeah, she's awesome. It's been years since I saw Golden it's, it's she dope. crushes dudes to death with her thighs. Yeah, it's great. Ooh, she's fucking awesome in that movie. <laughs> Kill me with your thighs. Yeah, then she's a Hemlock badass Grove. Female. Yeah, she's great in Hemlock Grove. I mean, she seems to be aware of exactly what it is. Like, yeah. everyone else in Hemlock Grove is taking it a little too seriously. She's, like, aware of the camp factor I think she, of that show. Like, I, I feel bad for her career in some way. I don't, I don't know why I should, but it seems like she got pigeonholed doing things that... You know, it's like she's better. She's better than that, probably. But it's like man, I don't no, know. She's... I saw the, some of those later X Men movies she was in. She was not better than those. <laughs> well, yeah. That but... third one. Mm. Well, yeah. But, but that's then again, not, that's, that's those not her movies. fault. I won't blame yeah. her for that. You know, I I don't think she was giving. particularly good in that movie though no. either. She was, she was really not good. helping it. She was really good next two. Like they all yeah. really good now. Those first two are great. 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Um, you. Uh, Allie Larder, all the Resident Evil movies, or oh, at least fuck. the last right, four of them. Claire Redfield, like, Jesus, Come on, Christ. Jesus, Colin. Jesus Those are Christ. your movies. I'm sorry. Jesus. You How me. dare you? I know. Um, it's blanked them right out. <laughs> I mean, who, who <laughs> like would, most Colin, people, yeah. Who wouldn't? Yeah. You got Bridget Wilson. Uh, Bridget Mrs. Wilson Sampras. Is she the, yes. the former Mrs. Pete Sampras? Or is she the current? Are they divorced? I don't know. I That's think a... they're. I think they're married still. Aren't she's. They? We would they know her married, from know uh, Mortal Kombat, right? Because she's. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, fuck. What's that character's name? Sonia Blade. Sonia. That's right. Because mm-hmm. I keep hearing her saying, "Jax, we've got to get to the something in fifteen seconds or whatever." <laughs> the... Jax. Yeah. Sonia Blade. Uh, Sonia Blade. Sub Zero. She was also. Uh, was it the wedding singer? What? No, she no, was um, the. The wedding planner. She was in the wedding no. Yes, she was. She was in the wedding planner. She wasn't the what star was it? of it. J Lo was. But... Movie. She played a bitch in a lot of movies too. Oh, Billy, she, Madison? Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Yeah. Oh, Billy Madison. There you go. Yeah. And uh, who else we got in here? Chris Kattan. Well, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> oh my god, a feature the- <laughs> player on Saturday Night Live for years. Yeah. <laughs> you know him from Night at the Roxbury. That's right. Uh, Which was before this. Yes, okay. probably. Yeah, I, I, I want to so. say it was like ninety eight. Maybe I saw that before ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a big deal that Richard Greco, like they made a thing, Richard like and ever, I'm sitting there going, does anybody know who the fuck Richard Greco? Do you know on Jump Street, man? Okay, so you do. All right. Yeah. I, mean, I know who he is. It was ninety eight. So yes, it was, this was a you know, hot streak for Chris Kattan really here, was. Uh, and then uh, yeah. never again. So never again. Never again and, after that. That's so. fine because this is his best. When was role. Corky Romano? Corky uh, probably. They had after. to have been the same time, right? Uh, right. But really close to this, yeah. and that was it. So I think that this is what it. we will remember him from. Also, yeah. I think so. The House on Haunted Hill, Night of the Roxbury, House on Haunted Hill. Corky Romano was two thousand one. I feel like we were all getting tired of him at that point. Are there sequels to that, or is that like one and done? I don't think that did no. very well as, as I don't think it was. so either. Yeah. Okay. You guys have you guys like kept up with him all lately? Nope. I know like, he does. After he comes watching, to rock for doing comedy every now and Well, again. after watching this, I was like, I realize how in poor shape he is now. I mean, oh, I yeah. know twenty years have passed between yeah. this movie and now, but yikes, man, like that neck injury and that pain pill addiction he had is really like yeah, he's not done good. a done a number on him. He's not good. But uh so what I do for fun sometimes is I go on <laughs> the website. Are you guys familiar with the website Cameo? Nope. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh <laughs> you showed it to me. Okay. It's you guys <laughs> you guys will be obsessed with it once you dive into it. It is a website where you can go on and there's all these different celebrities and for whatever dollar amount they set, you can send them a script and they'll record a custom video for you, right? Oh, oh right. All right, I know this. Uh, yes. Oh, my God. It gets insane. <laughs> because s- some people will are so desperate for money, they'll say whatever the fuck you want. Like, And Chris Kattan is on there, and wow, it is sad. Like, oh, it is just... Yeah. like Because like, when you click on a video, you never know if it's going to be like, congrats on your promotion, or like, sorry your mom died. Like, oh, you never know. No. So it's just like a roll of the dice. But like, That's he... Sad clearly like is doing the bare minimum to just like cash in in these videos and it's how long was he on sad. saturday night live for a few oh, years He's yeah for a quite a while like, i thought saying, a decade or uh, at least five or, years or, yeah well years. is that the standard tour of duty on uh contract so. it depends nowadays yeah, we got you know you got tim meadows who was on there forever and, yeah. and uh, Keenan, keenan's been on for like, like 15 him. seasons yeah, yeah, or yeah. something yeah. like he's that he's been on there the longest ever so well who else is in this movie then are we uh, are we rounded out the uh, cast. Jeffrey Rush, Jeffrey Johnson. Jeffrey Combs cameo. Oh, wait, uh, who? Combs. Yeah. Who? Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, yeah. who plays Doctor Vanicut. That's right. So much so that I didn't even recognize him in the movie. The However, mustache. Jeffrey Combs. Yeah. Is a goddamn horror legend. legend. Yep. A hero. I would say so. And this. He has been on this show before. I mean, and uh, uh, many a time. Yeah, many a time. So we actually have this thing on our show where we have this wall of mm-hmm. fame, right? And yes. the wall of fame, basically, in order to get on the wall of fame, you have to have been in a movie uh, three times, three movies that we've covered on this show. Yeah. Barely or otherwise. Jeffrey Combs has been in, uh, well, he was in Reanimator. Yes, We did Reanimator. We did uh, Castle Freak. Yes. We did uh, Robot Jocks. Mm -hmm. We did The Frighteners. We did. Um, He was also in uh, Would You Rather. He was. He was in. uh, You're missing one. You're missing one. We didn't do I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, did we? No, we didn't do that. (laughs) Do you want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. It's the Giver. The Giver, because he was Doctor East, right? Yeah. Doctor East. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you got all the other ones. Coming. And so that wow. would make that would make 
this is his he's, seventh he's appearance. Up. I was like, oh, oh no! Oh, oh, no. no. It's gonna be still. It's gonna be. It's, his, it's, it's guys, I need to change wall. my pick to a Stallone movie next week. No, you don't. <laughs> uh, we could just let it ride. But I Jeffrey just want to wall of fame. make this a point that Jeffrey Combs has now tied Sylvester Stallone. Oh, wow. In the amount of movies of his that we have covered on this uh, program. That's amazing. The man gets around. And this is like completely unplanned. So I think we should all probably pop like the champagne or do something. Maybe a toast. There we go. To uh, Jeffrey Combs. Uh, Uh, Some people are drinking out of plastic, so it didn't really register. But. Uh, this is a this is a, a an achievement. Yeah, it really and is. We congratulate you, sir. I mean, we should send the man a uh, certificate or something Muffin that you have made something. your your stamp <laughs> on the uh, pretty much send the free a, show. Yeah, the Wall, Wall of Fame. Fame certificate. I mean, the Seven they, Timers they'll, Club. Yeah, <laughs> right. Which are you and Sylvester? They'll tomorrow. show up at festivals to receive war- awards like this. He could show up here and receive this award. Yeah. Why not? I think you should. Well, you you talk to people on Twitter. I mean, like, I uh, yeah. There you go for next All right, week. I'll track him down and be like, hey, yeah. it's coming up, dude. <laughs> we have yeah. now talked about seven of your films. Yeah. So, and then he'll probably be like, can I direct you to my cameo website where you can pay me to record a message <laughs> no. for you? <laughs> Is oh, he on there? No. Uh, I, I don't know. There's a ton of people on there. There's a lot of people Boy. I've never even heard of. And you can sort by like price. So sometimes I'll sort by like lowest to see like who can I, like who's for a dollar and see if I know who Shit. these people right. are. And I I'm feel like, like no. I need to go on. Yeah, this. no, it's and there's oh like God, really famous right people. It'll be like five hundred dollars. You know, it sure. ranges. I would just want to know who's on there. Like, everyone you could imagine. Oh my God. All right. I have to YouTube stars. I've never heard of, but sure, also yeah. like retired athletes that have really bad CTE, and oh, like it's it runs the gamut of sure. anyone you can imagine. Right, I'm gonna check it's this the out. Saturday Night Freak Show sponsored by Cameo.com, <laughs> not the band, <laughs> the website. The website. Yes. The website. Um, so House on Haunted Hill, you've seen the original film, yes? Okay, I watched How, it today. Oh, did full. you? Yes. I had time in my hands, so okay. I just I looked it up. And I'm like, I'm gonna watch this today because it's only an hour and 15 minutes. Well, I've seen it, but it's been a while. I remember it's the bones good. of the story, but it's how really much good. of it that good, yeah. translates over to a this surprising amount? Because I remember the guns is a little party favorite. The guns is the party favorite. Oh, he has that great opening with Elijah Cook's like head, isn't it? Floating out, and you hear the screams, and it's like. That's the sound. Of, right, yes. Because yeah. he's uh, he plays uh, uh, Pritchett in that movie, mm-hmm. which is the only name that kind of transfers fully to this movie. Um, yeah, he's got his introduction. Um, uh, Vincent Price is a lot of VO in that, um, leading up to everyone, all the characters showing up to the, the house and everything and who they are. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he's even got a, a few good scenes where he breaks the fourth wall and looks directly at the camera when saying some of his lines. And I watched him like, fuck, that's good. Like, it's still good. Well, it's it, still it a retains good movie to the watch. bones of like, there's this Jeffrey Rush's character, the Stephen Price character. Uh, his relationship hates with his, his wife. wife. Yeah, that yeah. comes directly from the first movie. Yeah, they hate each other. They do not and like are each trying other. To, we're trying to figure out like, you think they're intentionally trying to kill each other or... I think is they're this, always trying to kill each other, but at some point they're going to take it just like, all right, we're doing it. Like something is needs to just like push them over the edge. Yeah. Well, I just, I wonder because like in the, the <laughs> you know, it it's like little- the whole movie seems to be like he hate, they both hate, they're locked together in hatred yes. and are trying to kill each other and we're trying to get somebody else to kill them. Right. I mean, that's they're always just fucking with each other. But that's yeah. a, it's a cool way that this movie had. Like, that's like there's this layer on. T- that's not even the plot. Yeah, it's like, but that's what's the engine that's kind of making it go because you're never really sure. They're you know they invite these seven strangers to a, a haunted or five strangers whatever yeah. to a haunted house, and then we don't know if what's actually happening is because you know uh, somebody's setting it up or or who is or yeah. if there's something the, if she's doing something to him if he's right. you know doing something for her, like or is it ghosts or is it the house yeah um the house in this movie the asylum you hear, you hear that it's a movie called the house on haunted yeah Road. And it's they keep the they movie. keep referring to it as a house but it's an asylum yeah yes. that's been restored uh, kind you know, of I'm one the for upstairs. Yes. Yeah, we yeah, spend a lot a of time bit. in the creepy basement, the which is this that was another thing about this movie is the outside of it. It's like fucking Arkham, right? It's massive, yeah. but then the inside you see two rooms. Mm-hmm. Like we're it we're, seems very yeah. tight. I think it's, inside. Okay, I think so it's all we're, below level. Like we're I think in the that's lo- where yeah. the asylum is. 
I think you have the inter- like the top floor. The the nice stuff we see is like uh, the introduction, the lobby. Like this right, room. but that still feels but, small yeah. though. Sure, for how but big I, that's that building. I think it is. I think small. it's all below but ground. How do you? It's like it, this is so the the and, and the other Dark Castle films have also used this kind of like they love the twenties Art Deco. Yes, look. which I do, yeah. I do it too. I do too. Looks good, but the movie looks like a. Like a Zeppelin or something, like a, or it's the house. It's from the Rocketeer. <laughs> yeah, yeah no yeah. kidding. It's got some like yeah. steampunk like qualities right to it. it. It looks like a pillar. So yeah, built into a cliff. Yeah, I like it. Cliff's wall. It's cool. It's cool. Mm-hmm. You imagine that you walk in and there's like stairs or an elevator that takes you up through multiple floors or something like that. But in the movie, once they actually go into this place, it's like here's the foyer yeah I'm like where do people sleep where's the bathrooms where are all the 150 rooms of the of the house we really only see the foyer mm-hmm. and the basement which i assume is beneath the cliff uh right oh yeah you walk in on the ground level you walk, into I that. Think you walk in like back here I, i'm pointing at the the cover yeah, of this no thing one right no now. one can see this i don't care <laughs> uh, you walk in back here and then everything else is great content for, but we don't for an audio podcast this. we just see right here yeah we just see like the foyer like you said we don't see this is a grand place it's tall there's like you know a, what, a dozen floors it's huge but we only see the foyer and then we on a video we see the bedroom where Jean Grey oh, is right yes. and which seem to be behind the bar like they're really close to that yeah I never main saw level. The, going yeah the bar is right off of the right. foyer it's yeah. right there it's all no, they go but upstairs it's, and, and it's but to me it still doesn't seem like a grand Entrance like it's, this place it, would have a more a, grand room. Wait, what do they call it? An open? It's definitely not open concept. No, that is not how I, this I is feel built. like this. Kind, I feel like this building would have a grander room that you walk into. So I it think, still doesn't um, make sense to me. Yeah, once they go up the stairs, there's a bunch of rooms they go by. Like even the, but all the wait, doors are closed. So we don't, yeah, there's but stairs even, off the main but even lobby. The, but even the staircase. I want a grander staircase than sure. what we have. Yeah, yeah. sure. I want to big, justify yeah. something that's like it looks want, like it's twenty stories tall. I want big curling banisters. Mm. I want a big. It's but this yeah. is 1999, folks. We you are know. past the banisters and great staircases and uh but we shouldn't be this this is the year the titanic came out they had great banisters yeah but that was from the 1940s (laughs) that's true this wasn't the year titanic came out 1999 no it was 96 damn it all titanic was 98 you got me so I, look it up. I I think ninety six. I think it's ninety six. I, it I think it's ninety eight. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's ninety six. I'll bet you. Someone whoever's you listening is punching yeah, their steering are, wheel yeah, right yeah, now yeah. That, that we don't know. I do this. that to podcasts all the time, listeners. Yeah. So I'm right there with you. Mm. Um, ninety seven. We were all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Split the difference. <laughs> um, I think it came out in December of ninety six. Okay, your heart must. I'm pretty on. sure it was probably December of ninety seven. Mm. So uh, the plot basically, Stephen Price is an amusement park uh, operator. Right. Mm -hmm. He owns multiple amusement parks. And we have a great scene at the beginning of this, which I actually think is like a great scene. Where he's introducing his new uh, 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 roller coaster. Oh, after the the initial scene and the like, the flashback scene. Well, that's right. Where Doctor Vanekit yeah, gets because that's the first scene. All the inmates uh, kill every we all get a the medical from 1931. Yeah, but everyone yeah. dies in the hospital, and so the hospital is closed down, and it is reopened in 1999. Now renovated, which was a great, effective opening to this movie. It was pretty good. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. All those creepy, insane people right. hanging out behind the glass. Yeah, the, and everything. the incision and the guy that's fully conscious, and it just like. You can see it, the wound like open and gush blood. Mm-hmm. That was great. And because Peter Graves, star of Mission Impossible. But no, we will all remember him as the host of Unsolved Myth. No. Well, no. not at all. That's Robert no. That's incredible. He, what the fuck was Peter Graves doing in the 90s? That's a good question. Okay. Wes, Google. Yeah. So he, that's right. It was Robert Stack. I was going was like, Stack. well, he's because... It seems like he did one of those shows, too. Anyway. He was doing that show on, in this movie. In this movie, oh. right? So Famke Jansen sees this and says, that's a great place to have my birthday party. Oh. And so that's where we're going to do it. And so she invites several folks. but the And then uh, her husband shreds that list and says, fuck you. I'm going to invite my people. Mm-hmm. And then the ghost reaches out because it's made of electricity. Mm-hmm. Reaches out through. Through the phone line. to Through the internet. Through the, yeah. Yeah, the using the phone line to the 
To the internet. The right. internet-based computer, yes. Colin. The online computer. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's what it was. Yes. The online the computer. The online computer. Yeah, using the internet. Connection to the internet? Somehow uses a f- the phantom mouse. Yeah. And operates, uh, what what would we have back then? Whatever the Mac OS was of uh, 1999, yeah. probably was Mac OS. Snow Lion, right? Something, Something like that. Now? Like, yeah. you know, Tiger Beat. They're, uh, not, so they're not cats anymore. They are? No, are it's they like Mojave and stuff. Uh, oh, there was one. Um, Sierra. Sierra Yosemite. Mo- yeah, Yosemite, Mojave. It's oh. all like shit like that and now. Shit, this is before the iMac. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like an Apple II, probably. Yeah. Um, but, maybe not that early. So this ghost mm-hmm. creature. Because he's got an Apple being laptop. Thing, yeah. At some point. Yeah. It deletes the list and invites, we don't know this, but uh, unbeknownst to the characters, descendants of the five sadists who Survived. escaped the massacre of the House on Haunted Hill. The Hope. fire. The Vanikid Institute. Mm-hmm. Um. So basically, all these folks get in there, and then uh, hijinks ensue. They get mm-hmm. locked in, right? And they have to fight for their lives That's against right. the ghostly things that uh, come out to get them. Are they ghostly? Okay. Well, yeah. this is the movie employs uh, a a lot of um, surrealism. Mm. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Surrealism. Yeah. yeah. This is William Malone's maybe thing because he also did a couple episodes of. Uh, Masters of Horror, mm-hmm. right? He did. Where and in and in Fear dot com, I think he kind of leaned. He did like this independent movie that I saw, and I can't remember the title of it. Like several years later, and it wasn't good. And I was like, no, there were a Malone's couple like, things. Not really a good yeah, director. There were a couple yeah. things on his IMDb list that I was like, eh, I've never it's heard like of that. Not <laughs> absentia. That was Mike Flanagan. Anyway, um, so he employs this technique because a lot of this stuff is uh done in camera for mm-hmm. yes. effects of of the era thankful for that yeah. which it looks like uh because we were trying to figure out is there an actual name for this effect but basically you make someone uh move really fast yeah. Yeah. while you expose you know you do these long exposures right and so it blurs the film. And speed it up. and Which so I first saw in a movie called Jacob's Ladder. I was going to say. Was, in yeah, yeah, Jacob's Sh- Ladder. Sean's, the, you've never seen I've Jacob's never seen Ladder Jacob's still? Ladder, so, so I don't know. I think it all comes from. Jacob's Ladder, a hugely influential movie. Especially yep. if you look at like Silent Hill mm. and all this shit. <laughs> which I never will again. Disturbed but... music videos. Right, and, yeah. Uh, whoever uh, yeah, you got it had from. an influence. Yeah. yeah. Even if I haven't seen it. Even know it's that... like narrative choices, I would say, are influential. Yeah. I mean. There's a reason people refer to endings of movies of like a Jacob Ladder scenario. Like, there's a reason why that's a thing. Like, I can't say because Sean's never seen it. And so. that movie has recently been remade for the Stars Network, uh, and yeah. it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be real bad. <sighs> that like movie is watch. a product of its time, you know. Like, I'll watch the remake. Just, I feel like I'm gonna watch the original and be like, yeah. I've seen this before. Probably. Uh, I think yeah, I think you have I've seen, seen it. Before. I've seen everything it's influenced, and now I'm gonna go back to it and be like, all right. Well, Jacob's that. Ladder. I remember like, I mean, because it was 1990 when that came out. Right. That movie to me felt like this was the first movie of a new, like this is a new type of horror movie. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'd never seen anything like that before. And then of course, you know, I saw stuff that predated it. Yeah. That you know, where it got but, some of its ideas, but. Uh, definitely in this visual style of like, think you know, heads yeah, wiggling really fast, really fast and doing all that. Mm-hmm. All comes from awkward uh, movements, yeah, or reverse photography yes. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, William Malone rips that shit off. Uh, I think maybe that's the thing with William Malone. He's it's a rip off. That's artist. absolutely the that's thing fine. with William Malone. Yeah, as evidenced yeah. by his Ridley Scott rip off from uh, uh, Creature. Yeah, I know this. What you do? Uh, each one of the characters meets their uh, demise uh, through, like, some kind of ghostly thing. Which ones were your favorite? Well, couldn't really tell you anything about any of them, honestly. Like, yeah. I mean, who do we get? Uh, we got, uh, we get the first, yeah, Bridget Wilson Bridget Sampras Wilson. is the first she one to go. She sees the ghostly. I mean, that was a yeah. pretty cool effect where it's, she's got a video camera. Yeah. She wants to be on a TV I show. I like that, yes. What I like happens? that. Well, the, she's going through and filming because she ends up in the basement as well, which is, you know, unfinished and still the remnants where of the old asylum. Where most of the movie takes place. Right. Uh, <laughs> still the remnants of the old asylum that was there. And so she goes, she winds uh, up in an operating room. Uh, in real life, no one's there, but when she lifts her handheld camera up to it, um, she can see the ghosts operating on 
uh, uh, somebody, one of the patients. And it's a really mm-hmm. cool effect, practically done, where um, you can see the camera moving along with the reveal yeah. of what you can see on the viewfinder. I think it's cool. it's basically timed out the, yes. the move. Which yeah. is done all practically, which it's you would never cool. do nowadays, unfortunately. But it, it you know, it's, it's done really well. It's very cool. Yeah, it's and very that, cool to see. And that it. moment when she's staring at him and she looks up and they're not there. And she looks back at the, she looks back at the screen and they're there and they all stop and slowly look yeah. at her. Yeah, that that always, that's fantastic. That nice sound effect onto the Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Always yeah. Got creepy me as movie. fuck. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. This movie does have a lot of creepy imagery. It does. It, does. it really does. I I hadn't watched this in a long time. I was just like forgot that this was a it's got creepy imagery and it's a fucking rated r movie that like goes for it like it's bloody yeah. bloody nudity like it goes it's a fucking movie like this would be pg-13 nowadays and you know, yeah i feel for yeah. sure and then that moment when she she turns and looks down the hall and there's the figure standing there and then it rushes towards her yeah. that was the first time i'd really seen that yes <laughs> And that scared the shit out of me as yes. a fourteen-year-old. Whether it was uh, the first time it existed, it was the first I'm, time a lot of yeah, us were. Yeah, it was the first it. time I was and exposed to that. That was my first that. experience yes. as well. We're just like yes. I'm trying wow. to remember if, if towards they the camera. did that in Jacob's Ladder. Also, maybe not. Though, I mean, now you've I'm seen sure. it in like movies, like you know, like I don't know why Mama is coming to mind, but they do it. You sure, know, it's yeah. like well, the yeah. Prodigy. Yeah. That was that was it. That was the whole trailer. Remember earlier this year, the Prodigy yeah. was. Uh, What's her uh, face? Taylor, whatever. Taylor Schilling at the yeah. end of the hallway, and she was talking to the boy, and then he jumps up and he's right yeah. in front of her face. Oh, and yeah. that was, that that was I it. About that that. Was, and then the trailer ended. Yeah. That was it. Annabelle, that was the, yeah. the first yeah. one. Did that too. Yeah. They do that yeah. all Everyone the time. Does now. Now. Yeah. It's like you get down the hall and then it's boom. A, it's right a staple. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. oh, it's down there. Oh, it's in your face. But that that's my first recollection of yes. seeing that. And it was terrifying at the time. Agreed. Yeah. And then when and then the imagery when it when it's like in her face, the morphing like ghost creature and then like all of the clips right. rapid fire like from what's happened there and it's it's very jarring yeah that's very that, effective that's it, like kind of surrealism which yes. i don't really yes. see the, people going after that in movies now Mm-mm. this kind of your know, rapid fire like just plain weird imagery yeah which yeah. is unassociated with anything else except it's like creepy imagery yeah because usually you know surrealist you're going for like a subconscious kind of thing but i don't know that it connects with like any of the characters subconscious it's just like here's something that's creepy yeah here's some weird shit you know i don't know how that connects to mrs sampras or her character (laughs) it doesn't really (laughs) but it's just creepy looking or it's weird looking you know and she gets taken away and we see we see the remnants of that later, way later on in the movie. She's the first one to kind of go. Mm-hmm. Is she we, the one that gets uh, operated on by? Remember the creepy nurse, and then the doctor comes in. Vanek right. comes in. I don't know. If you know who that nurse on. is? The creepy nurse. No. Who's that? The creepy nurse apparently has made it to the wall. You know how I know this. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, is this the wall or is it the hallway? Well, you will have you to tell, tell me. me who it is. And, All right. Uh, we'll so her out. name is, uh, sorry, sorry, going to, to the, the research paper. Her name is uh, Slatvica Jovan. Oh. Slatvica Jovan Slavica. has been in three movies that we have covered on this show. Her name sounds hallway. Just She's saying. the <laughs> twisted nurse in the house on Haunted Hill. Uh-huh. She's the sales lady in Body Double. But you will all know her from her most famous role as Gozer the Gozerian oh, in a movie stop. called Ghostbusters. Stop. Really? What? Yeah, a little mind Shut blowing up. right there. Minds are blowing right now. Love That's it. That's right. There Still she going to the hallway. Thank you, yeah. MF Man. For, but yeah, she's but that is good to know. Hallway of fame. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. That I love it. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Congratulations to her. For being in a hallway yeah these people all uh here's the other thing about this movie that i've always thought you gotta tell me like uh if it's different this is the, what separates the 90s from like 80s movies 80s movies gave you characters that were kind of like uh fun and interesting and uh you know you felt bad when they died mm-hmm. this movie gives you a bunch of cynical assholes every all single disposable. one of them are, well, disposable, I don't know. I mean, I suppose, but just because you don't like them, that's what you're saying. Uh, more unlikable is, I think, what you're getting at. I don't think like, they have a ton of personality. No. no the, or identifying I, characteristics. No, I more think... More stereotypical. I think, they, I think they direct us towards we're supposed to like Allie Lauder and Tay Diggs, and I'm like, eh, I don't care. 
Yeah. You know? No, I'm not attached. Well, because to ultimately they're here. The reason that they're there is to win a million dollars. That's the whole mm -hmm. yes. idea, right? So they're mercenary kind of in some way. Because you really think about it, it's like, who the fuck just shows up? Like, so they're basically saying, this is the 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 the, the, the premise that we're supposed to buy. Yeah. That they received invitations from somebody they don't know who basically said, I'll give you a million dollars if you survive the night in a haunted house. Right. And they got into a limousine, oh, a hearse. Yeah. And some of, some of them were limousines, though. I There's didn't. Like one limousine I didn't and, understand yeah. that. It was like every other one. It was hearse, limo, hearse, limo. It was, hearse, limo, hearse, limo. Yeah. It was like was every weird. other one, which I and, thought was strange. And first of all, there were five. Yeah. There were five cars coming up. Yes. Chris Kattan's already there. Yes. And there's four people who get out. What's the other car? Rerun. There were no. It was. It was. Um. Uh. Ellie Larder. Yep. Tay Diggs. Yep. Peter Gallagher. Yep. Bridget Wilson Sempras. Yep. And uh, Jean Grey. Five. Is she coming up in a she show, She's the last she's one to walk in the door. Right, she's the last one to walk in the door. Up, but they're oh, all five true. are coming together. Does she just not get out? Probably. Okay, that's fine. She's yeah. more important than all that's of them. That's fine. Yeah, take the that. peasants go first. But I specifically counted them, and I'm just like, the numbers don't okay. add up right now. We also okay. forgot Max Perlich, character, character actor who we will all remember from the movie Cliffhanger, is also in this film as the guy behind the scenes who oh, yeah. is uh, rigging all I'm the sorry. shit up. It's Rune from Gilmore Girls. Thank you very much. Yeah. He was the dude. Thank he you had, very much. He had long hair in fucking Cliffhanger, and that's what I remember him from. <laughs> was he one of the, the two dudes? Or? He was, yeah, he was one yeah. of the two dudes who, okay. you know, uh, jumps, you know. Gabe. The, yeah. yeah. He's, He's two thirds of the Rush. way to the wall is what you're saying, yeah. huh? <laughs> yes. You're goddamn um, right. <laughs> that is what we're saying. I think he was maybe in Drugstore Cowboy also, which we didn't watch. So no. never mind. It doesn't count. There and Rush, uh, the Jason Patrick, Jennifer Jason Lee movie. Um, so... We, we, were in, we, we were in yeah, deaths. We're, we were trying to go by the yeah, deaths. So we were going through Bridget Wilson Sampras and uh, how they rated in this. And yeah. Uh, well, there's yeah, a couple we get, fake yeah. outs, people who die, but they don't actually die, which yeah. is actually kind of cool. That, like, yeah, because like the, the center. Each other right, over. Which is also another yeah. staple from the original movie, people faking their deaths and then coming back. Right. And the, the, the relationships. Because uh, in the original movie, um, Vincent Price's wife fakes her own death. She is hung in the movie. Uh, in this one, uh, Famke Jansen is electrocuted, um, the shock therapy, yeah, um, and she quote unquote dies, um, and then she is revived by the doctor Peter Gallagher. Surprise! Right. She's having an affair with the doctor. Yeah, shock. is that from the original? Uh, yeah, it's the one guy who's in the original. The one guy who's kind of like steering the suspicion is like, I think it's her, and this is what we should do. Is the one who's just see? like what? See, yeah, see. <laughs> He's the one who's with the wife and is planning this whole thing. And there's and a lot. There's a, there's a big chunk device. of this movie that has spent like, I'm gonna kill you. No, I'm gonna kill you. No, it's they both fake their death, and now I'm actually gonna kill Peter Gell. Like there's between the three of them. Yes, there is a lot of time spent. But yeah, it, is. it seems lot. unnecessarily complicated. It I just does. want someone <laughs> to explain to me how the guns are working. And then there's like the right. second <laughs> level of this is like the, uh, you know, because that's what I was thinking. I'm like, who's the main character in this movie? And I'm like, well, the primary dynamic is between Stephen and Evelyn Price. Yeah. Right. They are the main attraction. Sure. But below that, you've got Tay Diggs and Allie Larder. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Leading the cast of what then is the uh, Catan and, yeah. and Gallagher beneath them. Uh, but those four characters have things to do in the movie that are kind of, you know, it's like, at least it's, I'm interested in what, what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, Cause we're, in, we're interested in watching the people that are wandering around the house that might get killed by the house. Mm -hmm. That's right. what we're interested in. Because eventually once you find Max Perlich with his face blown out in the control room, right. this is not fake. There is actually, uh, some kind of homicidal demonic right. presence in the house. Now the original film, if I am correct. There was actually no ghosts. No ghosts. It was At all the set end, up. there's like the the skeleton rises up out of the yeah. acid bath, and uh, that was him supposed to be killed, right? And then that it, was supposed to be she gives Price, her a yes. heart attack. Or something. Yes, and she stumbles into. Yeah. That's, but, but that's when she, the skeleton he, flies out uh, into the audience. At right, that point, yeah, yeah, that's the, the, the yeah, emergo. Uh, he uh, uh, he says she stumbled into it, but then it, um, what actually happens in the thing is the the skeletal hand comes up and shoves her, which is one of the best things in that movie. It's just like, 
Ugh! It barely shoves her. That's pretty great. Um, if you haven't seen the original movie, I would recommend it because it's actually really good. Yeah, it was really good. And I, even watching it today, there's a scare in that movie that still got me, which I think is one of like the best scares one of those old mm. movies. Um, it's when... No, uh, no, 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 spoil it. In we'll the just original? Say, yeah, yeah. You, gotta be, you can check oh. this movie out because it is on every single it's, like collection of like uh, what 8 to 12 horror movies. If you go to sets. its Wikipedia page... It's there. Yeah, it's a public can, domain. It's public movie. domain. You can yeah. just watch it there. Yeah. Yeah. There's better versions of it, obviously, yeah. but it's just there. And I would definitely recommend it. It's a fun movie to watch. Yeah, and it still will scare you because there's some cool shit in that movie. It's a good one. Yeah. Well, you may have to, in our wrap ups later, tell us which one was better. I'm curious mm, how the. Because I, I mean, like I said, I've, saw, I've seen it, but it was a while ago. Mm. I remember thinking it was okay, but maybe, I don't know, you're that's, fresh. That's pretty good. Um, the end of this movie uh, does. We get into because uh, no, this is nineteen ninety nine. We go full supernatural. Full supernatural. And to do that, we employ cutting Smoke. edge CGI special effects. How'd you think those held up? They didn't. <laughs> I like the idea of it. I mean, they would obviously I do it different now. It is very nineteen ninety nine. Like very. It felt like. Um, I can see the connection between this and fear dot com. Like I, I that yeah. feeling. The, I was actually the, even thinking that with the um, the like the ghost, the ghost doctor, like his yeah. face to me looked yeah. exactly like the face on the poster of fear dot com. com. Yeah, with the right the black mm-hmm. eyes. Didn't it look just like him? And, yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, There's you used that again. <laughs> that is of that like yeah. of that time. Like I'm yeah. pretty sure if the imagery of that time, if you showed me that from a different movie, I'd be like, that's around 1999, 1998, yeah. 2000. Yeah, because the, there was the creature that has like. a big mouth for a face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was cool. I like that. Uh, that was cool. Even I did like that. I think his fair haired child masters of horror episode kind of looks like that creature that scared the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it has yeah. a similar... He uh, reuses his ideas a lot. Yeah. yeah. His well, ripped off ideas. A lot of these guys do, it seems Yeah, they like. do. They have, like, this they is have the a thing signature. They have, out. yeah. They do. Also, uh, it was all practical. There was a ton of practical just makeup effects. Yeah, no, stuff. I gotta say, like, the practical effects in this practical movie, there's a lot. I like know. A, it's kind, kind of... of but that's why it looks so much worse when you switch to CGI at the very end like I that for that so. end scene oh, because up until that point it was all practical. The CG at the end like incorporates parts of practical. It does. It's yeah. spliced. Yeah, it's it's There's a bunch of yeah. naked girls in it that are doubled and Yeah. there's this kind of like uh, they what took, do you call that when you take a uh, it's like a mirror you yeah. split half the frame. It's it's like they took then, they took vintage video of naked women dancing right. and they made it into like a digital Rorschach right. basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's yeah. like this, I don't know yeah. how to it's explain it. Thing, yeah. It's a smoky yeah. creature. Or, I mean, it yeah, doesn't... Or when you, like, drop food coloring into water, yeah. you know, the way it spreads out like, and everything. On it, it, it does like not that. hold up watching it now, but I still, like, I still think it's kind of cool. It is. It like, is, a, I, I it like is specific. The, it I is like the choice. I like the choice for that time. Yeah. It was cooler to me this time. I think when yeah. I saw it, when it's it was pretty. new... <laughs> It pissed me off because I'm like, it looked fake yes. as hell. No, right? for Time sure. Around. For sure. It read to me like, you know, now I kind of have this fondness for uh, the 80s uh, vortex. Sure. You know, right? You sure. know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like the 80s fantasy vortex that yeah. all yeah. those movies had. That's what this looked like to me. It was like, oh, this is the 90s version of that. Like right. the fucking CG. We used to have uh, yeah. portals. Now we have this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I do think they did a good job of like the ghost cloud when it like when like Famke Jansen's face would come out right. of it. Yeah. It did look like her, and like that's kind of an impressive thing to pull off with that because like it's not a lot of detail. It's basically just like a like a basic outline of her face, and like yeah. but they got the cheekbones and the eyes right enough that you could tell it was her. It, yeah, I, I think they filmed those are actually they filmed her, yeah. and it's like it's placed yeah. in there with like and, overlaid with other shit, and so because much, I don't think a lot of it is. That's why I wonder. I don't think a lot of it is straight CG as it is uh, using the computer to make a bunch of uh, composites yeah. of shit that of you actually shit. filmed yeah, yeah, yeah. and just layered the shit that's, out of it. That's and exactly it. it, and, I think you that's, know, what it all that's exactly it, because I, I read that they were, they, the interview said that they were claiming that it wasn't actually CGI, that it was exactly what you're saying. It's layering. Yeah. yeah. It's not computer models. Exactly. It's uh, actual yeah. photographed crap, like, you know, just yeah. distorted. And yes. what Michaela was saying, like how it's, 
it's varied enough that like you can see all the features and it's enough that you can tell the difference because the face changes if you know one minute it's Jean Grey and the next minute it, it's Bridget and the next minute it's Chris Kattan and you can see the difference mm-hmm. like it but it still has that like muted look where it's all blended together I think it looks cool mm-hmm. but the only thing where this movie like completely shits the bed this is where <laughs> I was like oh. uh, it was um I mean, it basically, you know, at the end of it, it's like there's this evil haunted center of the house, yes. a room where you don't go because it's been locked away. Is, yes. And that's why the house is evil. This isn't really explained as the like no. this caused the this, massacre. And, right. This, yeah. this concept better done in um, Hill House. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Haunting or, of Hill House. I mean, or even yeah. Amityville. Well, OK, maybe not better done. Eh. But there's haunting always like the evil heart of the house. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which Chris Kattan has been saying the entire movie. The house is alive. We're all going to die. Yeah. yeah. People uh, encounter the cloud monster thing. Yeah. And are dissolved and absorbed into it. Yes. I like Chris what Kattan, they did to Jeffrey Rush. Right. He gets, <laughs> Famke Jansen gets absorbed. Jeffrey Rush gets absorbed. Chris Kattan gets absorbed. Yeah. But for some reason, uh, when we make it to the attic, which is the other uh, mm-hmm. location in the, in the house that we finally get to see. Yes. Um, as Allie Larder and uh, Tay Diggs are escaping uh, into the daylight, uh, the ghost of Chris Kattan shows mm-hmm. up in a in a beam of light or some kind of shit. Because to, he's a good uh, man. Yeah. And that was the moment where I'm like, I cannot get past this. <laughs> <laughs> to help them get out. Like, I can, I can, even I'm suffering through the shitty visual effect, which again, like I said, now I have some affection for. Sure, sure, sure. sure. But... I can't get past the because uh, it blows the like he was absorbed into the thing, mm. and but she just said like we're but, all here, blah 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 blah. But uh, but those are I think like if you're a shitty person, you get absorbed into the shitty person cloud, which is basically what it is. And I think Chris Kattan was a better person than that, so he is not necessarily going to spend his time in hell of being part of the shitty cloud. That's what I take away from it. He was better than this all that. This is literally the the Deus Ex Machina sure. showing up to save the. I mean, yeah. it was like, what the fuck? He like opens the door so they can head out, and, like winks at him or something, and like, yeah. I mean, uh, you, I'm guessing you also don't like that the million dollar checks just end up under the door. <laughs> well, I assume that was also Chris Kattan. Sure, yeah, he's jumping <laughs> yeah. out there. He's like, hey, buy yourself it's something very- nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get the five five million dollars. Yep. Which it's good luck. Million cashing those. You have to cash it real quick if you get off that building. <laughs> like you go into a bank and you've got five checks made out to cash for a million dollars each. They're not going to question that. Yeah. Good luck. Like we need to talk to the I do it like that day. Like, oh, let me check this account. After I get oh, the, the millionaire that has this account is also missing? Yeah. That's Good yeah. luck with that. Fast as you can. They are yeah. going to seize, seize that account uh, so quick. They're not getting that money. What happened? They're not getting that money. Absorbed him? I don't know. But it, you know what? That doesn't even matter because they're not getting off the fucking Probably balcony not. of this place. No, they're dead. They're done. No, Unless their is cell the, phones are working. Ending, yeah. Yeah, because remember, they're facing the ocean. Yeah. There's not like people driving they're, by no, they're, yeah, just they're stuck on a to... little ledge it's like that sky yeah. prison in game of yeah. thrones yeah that's yeah. basically they're, what they're, they're on they're that's exactly what right it is there there's no way they it can is get the, to the next most level. pessimistic optimistic ending in a movie where it's like hey, hey, they escaped with five million dollars and then they're they died going anywhere because eventually they got hungry and they said you know maybe maybe if we jump we can make it yep that's exactly Oof. what happened <laughs> i i was secretly hoping the wind was going to come and take like a check out of their hand or something like real yeah, quick before something. the end and credits would grab for it and then just fall yep, off. yeah <laughs> but we don't get to see that it ends with the reprise of uh sweet dreams yes, by marilyn manson a great song fade it is a great fucking song i do love it's this version of the song shit. it is and i love that goddamn song it's really good all right. There you right. go. So, uh, go. Uh, ladies and germs, what we're going to do, we're going to go around the table. And we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch The House on Haunted Hill. We're going to review The House on Haunted Hill individually. You're going to find out who you agree with, who you don't. We're going to throw the movie to the wolves and find out if it still holds up 20 fucking years later. Because to the, the month Goddamn, 20. came out in October. October. Ooh. Halloween. Came out um, Halloween. Yeah, so we're right, we're right there. About a month. We're right there. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. This is the most exciting part of the program. Uh, and to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his best little Vincent Price mustache on today. Oh, that's just oh, dirt. That's cute. just dirt. That's just dirt. <laughs> very cute. Just let him let him think he did it on Brave. You know, let's let's get let's let him have it. I'll do the thumb thing where I yeah. lick my thumb and get it off his face. <laughs> well, uh, hey, we should let you know. Like, uh, join the Freak Show family right into us because we read your mail on this segment of our show. You can get a hold of us on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter, at Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram. G Money writes in about the house on Haunted Hill and I says. I you don't say our Instagram. Didn't I? Saturday no, Night Freak Show? Follow oh, on Instagram. <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show for the time of your life on Instagram. Okay, That's right. All right. Now it feels uh, right. Michaela <laughs> is adding to our stories. You can watch us watching the movie mm-hmm. on Instagram. Um, G Money writes in and says, uh, severed boobs on a wall is about all I remember about this one. Time for a rewatch. I think there was one boob on the wall. Yeah. I know, because I was like, what the fuck is he? And then I'm like, oh, it was uh, Mrs. Sampras. Yes, Mrs. Sampras. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in and says, Jeffrey Combs is the only redeeming quality about this shit show. Damn. We'll get to it. Well, that's fucking harsh. <laughs> Simon Carter says, I'm pretty sure I saw this at the movies. I don't remember much, but I think it was the first time that I saw that weird, twitchy, fast moving effect and it freaked me the fuck out. And I remember Famke Jansen. Oh boy, do I remember Famke Jansen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was many people's first (laughs) Yes. I'm pretty sure that comment is going to get repeated a couple times <laughs> in this mailbag. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Bradford writes in and says, I saw this one in college at Western Carolina back in 2000, packed in a dorm room with several hallmates. I remember it being not very good. Um, so I, I do appreciate experiences like that, though, you know, where you get a bunch of people together and, right. and just make the best of a situation like that, you know? I watch a horror movie. Yeah. Well, Pat Nowacki says, I loved it. The cast is great. Jeffrey Rush's scenery chewing is phenomenal, and even Chris Kattan manages to stand out. It, yeah, I, mean, I really think it's got to be Chris Kattan's best thing, right? I, think be. So. I would say so. I I'll, would say it's I'll, the I'll only it. Chris Kattan thing. Well, well, I mean, well, but you don't like, you don't like comedy, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have fun. He's memor- definitely more famous for A Night of the Roxbury. Well, sure. I have fun memories of him just being on SNL. Me too, with Mango and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Jim Otto says, I had remembered hating this movie, but on a rewatch, I really liked it. There you go. Neil Gum says this one was more, much more entertaining than The Haunting. Yeah, that's pretty. I, it oh. had some great visual style, particularly the herky jerky sped up movement of the specters. The CGI at the end is admittedly pretty rough. Yeah, there it is. is. Nicholas Capriola says this is actually one of my favorite movies. That's that actually kind of surprises me about him. Yeah. <laughs> says the person that didn't like The Shining, right? No. I don't think so. I can't remember who that was. Uh, Stephen Haynes writes in. Stephen Haynes, sorry, writes in and says, this was the first and, in my opinion, best of the Dark Castle movies. The overly CG heavy finale could have been done better, but on a whole, the movie was a fun time at the theater. It's a shame that Dark Castle couldn't keep up the quality with their later releases, although I did like 13 Ghosts for what it was. Uh, just got Beetlejuice, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Michael Whitaker says this was one of many haunted house movies that were a brief fad for a while. This was also around the time that I started to like horror movies a little more and I paid it Mm -hmm. to watch this in the theater. I think it's zaniness appeals to me a little more than something serious like the haunting. Uh (laughs) Yeah, it appeals to me more than the haunting as well. I didn't want to deal with (laughs) Lily Taylor shit in that movie. Fuck. She shit in that movie. No, her, her psychological her baggage and shit. Yeah, her general shit. shit. Yeah. That was her graduating from indie darling yeah, I know. to mainstream. Well, she movie didn't graduate. It doesn't always go well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well. Now she's in the, the first Conjuring movie, so finally she made it. Grant Parrish writes in and says, This came out around the same time as The Haunting. Uh, there it is. <laughs> I always preferred The Haunting to ah. this because oh, I think <laughs> of the slow burn, spooky versus House on Haunted Hill seems to jump faster to the scares. It's got nice eye candy in this one, though. 
We'll, well, okay. We'll leave that vague I mean, yeah. I, it could be effects. No, could I, be the women. Who knows? Who knows? No, it's Tay Diggs. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it could be. Obviously. Jacob Kotner writes in and says, I actually rewatched this recently. The late 90s were the worst period in horror, if you ask me. Amen, brother. Uh, CGI was getting cheaper to use, and every studio took their shot. Usually the effect shots were barely passable for the time, but look horrible. In the more modern day, the story's okay, and the ending's kind of hopeless, but otherwise, not a very memorable film. Still better than the Haunting remake. Yes, it is. Yes, we, it is. You know, I, I gotta say, everyone in the mailbag writing in the same couple things means, like, our... All the right people are listening to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they are, you are all our people. Yeah, yeah. you're our people, yeah. and you guys are all really smart yeah. because you all have the yeah. same kind of thoughts. So, except for uh, the one guy who likes the haunting. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay to like a movie. That's fine. That's fine. Well, Ryan Douglas eighty says I've always been a fan of this movie. How is Mister Rush in this? I don't know, but he's great. Yeah, he is great. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't even know what you just said. Sir. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, about yeah. it. Chapter two. Nick Siebel writes in, and so this is a movie we watched uh, several weeks ago. Nick Siebel says, "I've seen it twice, and I still don't love this film. I don't hate it, like I initially did, but something is still not right with this film. The ending is also god awful. Really, they defeated Pennywise by screaming at him. They bullied him into a Benjamin Button version of Pennywise. Laugh out loud." To me, yeah. it's no dumber than kicking him to death in the TV movie. Like it's it's it, on par, just as bad. Good. Like yeah, yeah no, I'm good. not saying it's good, but I'm just saying it's way. to me that's not any dumber than th- kicking it to death. Ugh, you know, yeah, clown, you they're that. both stupid. <laughs> like, I feel like general consensus about this movie though is I didn't hate it. Yeah, but it could have been a lot better. We, yeah. well, we kind we're of all, find out because yeah. yeah. uh, most people wrote in about House on High Hill. Everyone else wrote in about it. Chapter right, two. Right. Andrew John writes in and says, "So I thought." It Chapter 2 would be my biggest disappointment of the year. Then last night I saw Three from Hell. Oh, boy. Uh, Any of you uh, seen it or are going to one of the three-night events? I think we all answered this. We are all uh, still personally hurt by 31. Yeah. So Yeah, that was a big one. That was, uh, it's actually four-night events now because the movie's been so successful that oh, Fathom Jesus. It made almost another... $2 million, guys. Yep. Almost. But for Fathom Events, that's like a huge, that's, yeah, for yeah. Fathom huge But for a Rob Zombie movie, that's terrible. Yeah, that'll make its money, I'm uh, sure. No, on, we're, uh, uh, I, we will be skipping the theater. Yeah, I think I'll be screenings. skipping the movie to tell you the truth. I yeah. don't I so. need... Uh, you'll watch it at some point. I think, uh, you know I, think I might do it for our like, end of the year, like best and worst of the year list. I might watch it just to... If it shows up on a streaming platform that I have, I'll watch it, or I'll try anyway. I want to have a really hated worst of the year this year. I really want to go in on something, so that might (laughs) be it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that seems like a good candidate. You know, I like your dedication. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) About it, chapter two. Maya Madsen writes in and says, "Sean is right. The movie is not good. Why can't anybody get it right? Maybe my expectations are too high since I read the book probably twelve times as a kid. Thank you. There it is. So I know it's themes inside. Doesn't make it wrong." It, but it colors your perspective. Uh, everything colors your perspective. That doesn't make the. That doesn't mean she's not right. I'm just saying there's not a coincidence between her agreeing with you and you both having read the doesn't book. Doesn't mean that's, she's not right. That's why you guys agree. Doesn't mean she's not right. I didn't say she was wrong. I'm just saying she know, has a different just perspective. Just, I just can't blame it on that one thing because we read the book. She said she's read it 12 times. That's fine. She likes it. So well, she's got a lot of personal attachment. You know what she did like? She said Bill Hader was a treat, though. He stole the show. Yeah, he did. Of course. He was great. Uh, Brent Zemecki says, as a horror film, it fails entirely, but as a horror comedy in the vein of Evil Dead 2, it succeeded. Hater steals the show, and it was a blast watching him. Yeah, yeah, Maybe absolutely. Better if we just, For like sure. you said, start watching it as a, a Nightmare on Elm Street part, whatever, and just start. Like a four or five, yeah. yeah. Maybe we just need to go into it as that. And- mm-hmm. Well, Dan Dunn says they could have removed most of the flashbacks and added more with Henry Bowers. I wanted more mullet. <laughs> that mullet was out of control in that movie. Uh, uh, Carson Snar. All righty. <laughs> cool. That's with two R's. Says, it's true. You really don't get to know the adults very well. I thought this movie could have focused only on the present day, but some of the kid flashbacks were cool. I feel like you could tell none of the adult actors actually spent any time with each other, whereas the kid actors seem to actually be like really like bonded bond together. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that yeah. for sure. Uh, Teresa Ann says, I highly enjoyed it for what it was. Some of the scares could have been in chapter one, like the Paul Bunyan scene, but I did find some of the scares more effective here than in the first. Mm. Mm. I got more out of the first. Yeah, same. But but I, I, 
I've heard that from people. So I guess it depends on what kind of scares you want. Yeah, that's, you know? that, I agree yeah. with that. Because sure. like I was saying, I like the Pennywise, like the clown scares more yeah. than like the big creatures and weird body horror stuff. So I guess yeah. if you like that kind of gooey, gross stuff, then it works All for you. The map. Yeah. Well, finally, Jacob Laws says, I greatly enjoyed it, but the children should have been two scenes at the most. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully when he does his super cut, he'll make that right. Yeah. We'll Just see. put them yeah. in the we'll actual see. order that they need to be mm-hmm. or something like that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for writing in. I mean, again. Yes, uh, that was a very full mailbag. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah. It. I think that's the most full that it's been in. Uh, appreciate your thoughts. A long, long while. So thank you again. Now. This is the moment that you've all been waiting for. We're going to go around the table and we're going to review the house on Haunted Hill. Colin! Hey, Colin. What's up, Sean? Hey, what'd you think about this movie, House on Haunted Hill? Oh, man, I saw this movie and it was called The House on Haunted Hill. And you know what I wanted from that title? I wanted a house. On a haunted hill? On a haunted hill. And, uh, well, there's definitely a house. I don't know, in the matte paintings or whatever. is it? Could, We're, I'm not even sure if it's a. It's, it's a an house. asylum. There's a building a house on a house. Um, I have a. Um, I mean, I gotta admit it. With this one, I, I don't think I can see it clearly. I have a nostalgia uh, tie to it. I remember the experience of watching it on opening night, and I think uh, this is one of those movies where I like to watch it because it remind every time I watch it, it reminds me of that experience. Mm. I had a positive experience watching the movie. It is, um, to me, it's, uh, this is what I kind of want out of the, like, no calorie, uh, you know, uh, 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 a horror. This is the White Claw of horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the White, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the White Claw It's horror. the horror, it's the big studio, uh, like, so you know that there's not really anything right. to it. it. Used to be the popcorn of horror. I just want it to be fun. I suppose yeah. the only thing that you know I'm saying is like it's fun even though the characters are so like you know cynical, mm. right? And you know I would have preferred like to actually like them, right? But I think in spite of all that, I did kind of like uh, even how fucking just nasty. Uh, the prices were. Mm. I kind of like them because I think I like the people. Somehow, that it's that magic of casting by having um Jeffrey Rush in uh and Famke Jensen in those roles. It works, and it's a uh, the alchemy of just that casting. If you put somebody else in there, it may not have worked. Yeah. Uh, the set design's really cool. It seems like that was the thing that I kept going to these dark house movies for because uh you know this one had the fucking great. Art Deco house. Um, Thirteen Ghosts has the 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 the, the house the glass with, shifting with house glass yeah. walls, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't. You, the whole thing's made of glass. Um, uh, ghost ship, obviously. You know, I don't really remember what the production design. Mm-hmm. And then the house of wax. I just remember, you know, the house built yeah. of wax. It melts. Look cool. at the end. It's some fucking awesome scenes at the end of that thing. Um, but that's part of it. I thought, um, you know. I mean, I did, you know, after seeing this movie, go William Malone. I gotta, I gotta check this guy out. Then I went back and saw his earlier stuff and saw Fear dot com, and I'm like, okay, House on Haunted Hills, all he's got going for him. Mm. Um, but I, I just enjoyed the movie up until the very end, and a lot of time the Chris Kattan thing and the special, you know, whatever the ghost uh, smoke monster. Um, I was a little more forgiving of the smoke monster this time around less forgiving of the Chris Kattan ghost that mm-hmm. saves the day. It was kind of, it kept reminding me of the very end of, you ever seen Stephen King's The Stand or read the book? Yeah. There's a character who dies, who shows up at the end of it to like sit. And I'm like, God damn it, Stephen King. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why the fucking TV miniseries have to do it? It's like, it's just ridiculous. I hate it. But like the character's done, but they are some kind of angelic presence. You know, because their character was so good. I guess, I'm like, Chris Kattan's not a good guy in this movie. Why is he an angel? Basically, at the end of the, it doesn't make any fucking sense. But this is applying a, a level of, you know, something I want out of this movie that the movie is not obviously shooting for. It's just, yeah. it's out there to be gross, to be exploitive, to entertain. It does, I think, maintain a level of uh, fun and interest. And it's cool to look at and... uh 
you know, it was creepy and it, it feels to me, and maybe this is because I saw it probably on October, what, 27th, 1999. To me, it's always going to be like it. When I watch this movie, it feels like Halloween, mm. mm-hmm. you know, it's like, this is a decent, uh, Halloween B movie. And uh, I I enjoy it. I've watched it uh, a lot. So when Holly was like, yeah, I'm going to pick that. I'm like, well, I already watched it this year, but we'll watch it again. Because this is like, you know, we're kicking off October uh, with the house on Haunted Hill. I would recommend it. You got to check it out. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Um, I just want to say that I'm uh, I'm very surprised that. You are all in for this movie. I'm surprised that this is the your movie that we're watching tonight. Yeah, you don't not, usually like the '90s. Stank. Yeah, yeah, I did no. not think this was going to be I your thing. I, I don't. I honestly don't like the other Dark Castle movies. Right. I, Although and that's understandable. I, I will make an exception for parts of uh, the only other one that I own is House of Wax. Yeah. But that movie, like, there's a good movie that's about like an hour and or it's in ninety minutes. The movie's two hours Ugh. long, so oh, you cut why? a half hour out of that, you get a pretty decent beat oh, movie, but why? I'll forgive it. Okay. Um, House on Haunted Hill. Um, uh, like you said, the, the nostalgia factor is high for this one. This is one of the uh, um, one of the earliest one of the earliest horror movies I've seen. I saw. I think I saw Halloween and Texas Chainsaw Massacre before this, um, but it's definitely like one of the very first '90s horror movies that um, I saw very recently. I don't think I saw it in theater, but very recently when it came out on video, um, and it really like it really stuck with me. This was a repeat viewer, like I said earlier before. This was the f- probably the first horror movie poster I ever had on my wall because it's just a cool looking poster. Um, and I really enjoyed the movie back then, and watching it tonight, I had a good time. Um, uh, I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this. God bless Chris Kattan, right? because he was like, he's like my favorite character in this movie. He's actually really enjoyable. He's really enjoyable. <laughs> I love his sarcasm. Yeah. I like it that he just doesn't, he just wants to get the fuck out of there, and then when he's stuck in there, he's just like, we're all going to fucking die, and I'm just going to be sarcastic until something comes and takes me. Um, so I really enjoyed his character, um, his comic relief throughout this movie. Um, Jeffrey Rush, I think, is great casting for this character um, as, quote-unquote, the Vincent Price character. I think the dynamic he has with Humka Johnson is really good. Um, you get a lot of uh, – there's a lot of creepy stuff. I, I forgot that this was just like a, a rated R kind of go-for-broke, bloody horror movie. Um, I forgot a lot of that imagery was in here. Um it was really good. I I like the characters are very like uh, snippy and cynical and mean, but I you know I like the people who are playing them. I like yeah. Ali Larder and Tay Diggs and Jeffrey Rush. I like I like the casting is really good for this movie. Mm-hmm. They did really well. If you're not gonna um, particularly like these characters, you like the actors, and that yeah. helps it a lot. Is that because we we've seen them and stuff before? I think We're, so. Yeah, yeah. maybe you're it's, it that, is. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, all it's unknowns because, or anything. Like we know them. It's because in 1999, these are people you want in your movie, right? Yeah. And they really yeah. got all those people, yeah. which is you know uh, to their uh, to the benefit of the movie. I would say. Um, obviously, when we do get to the end, we do go heavy. Like we really go for like the supernatural heavy CGI stuff, but um, you know. I'm okay with it. It didn't, you know, uh, at this point, like I, I knew it was coming and, uh, uh, I was, yeah, I was still pretty okay with it. I was pretty okay with it when it came out in the first place. Um, so, um, I had a good time tonight. I forgot that I, I really liked this movie. So, uh, I'm going to recommend house on haunted Hill. Like you said, uh, it's not going to be a list whatsoever. Not a lot of the movies that came out of the nineties were, but it's definitely a really fucking solid B movie horror. Um, and I really liked it. So I'm going to recommend house on haunted Hill. Michaela. I never saw this movie as a kid, and I have zero nostalgic attachment okay. to this movie. Um, and haunted house movies don't really work for me. Um, it's just not a subgenre I'm interested in. It's just it's not anything I find particularly scary. I kind of find them all to be the same and similar, and it doesn't help that all their names are almost the same either. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just I found it to be kind of a slog. I didn't find it to be nearly as fun and enjoyable as you guys did. Uh, so I don't think I can recommend it. It just, it didn't do anything for me. It, uh, Chris Kattan was great. It was cool to see a cast that is completely like frozen in amber of that time. Um, but it just, it didn't really do anything for me. So I can't recommend it. Holly? Um, yeah, I hadn't seen this movie in a really long time, but I rem- I remembered a lot of it, which for mm. me isn't always the case. I, I don't have a great memory and particularly a movie... Like this, I wouldn't think that I'd remember as much of it as I did. Um, 
And I, I think it's a lot of it is because, like I said earlier, a lot of these a lot of these moments in this movie were things that I hadn't seen at this point in 1999. I hadn't seen these things done and they were, they, they were, it was imagery that genuinely scared me. I, I thought right. it was really cool and um, it had a lasting effect on me clearly because 20 years later, I still remember it. Um, and I remember how I felt in those moments, which again is something pretty unique in a, mo- a horror movie in the nineties for sure. But, but in a lot of movies in general. Um, so it has had a lasting effect on me and I, I, you know, I think we're on the same page that it's the nostalgia factor is very real and it, it it has a major impact on how you feel about this movie. But I think there's a lot of it that is still really enjoyable. I, I agree with Michaela there, that it can be very slow. Mm. Um, definitely. But there's enough there that I didn't mind it so much and I still really enjoyed it. Um, I think a lot of the design is really beautiful. Like even the, the effects at the end, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cheesy. Like they don't age well, but I think there's something really pretty about it. Like I like the, you know, I know that the the monster was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, and they mm-hmm. took like the the Rorschach design and and uh, the fact that they layered the the video. Like I think it's really beautiful, and I really appreciate it, even if it's a little. St- it's it, the ending is stupid. Let's just say it's stupid, <laughs> but it's kind of beautiful, and I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, like there's a lot of things I I forgive about this about this movie. Um but yeah, I really enjoy it. I definitely recommend it. I think it's a fun movie. Um not all haunted house movies are great, but this one I enjoyed. I think it's I think it's fun and it I agree with Colin. It makes me feel like the Halloween season is here. And um yeah, that's why I brought it to get into spooky season. Kick it off. So spooky. yeah. I recommend House on Haunted Hill. It's a good time. Uh well I, we I I said I was gonna ask and I I totally forgot so House on Haunted Hill, nineteen fifty nine nine versus yeah. nineteen ninety nine Sean ooh I'm gonna say the first one the original yeah better movie so. yeah I think it's a better movie yes okay I would say it's a better movie it was yeah. and it's still in like I said it's still enjoyable to this day there's some actual good scares in there and. Um. Yeah, it's actually some good character work. I would definitely yeah. the first one. I agree. I I, I like this movie. Yeah, I, I, me too. I think, like we just said, there's some things that are really enjoyable about it, but the original is a better movie. Yeah, and it's classic. And it's also real quick. Like it's I said, just, hour it's fifteen, fast. you're in and out. <laughs> it's stuff. a it's a classic movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also uh, I don't know about MVP, but I I did appreciate the score by uh, it was it Don Davis? I think did the because mm. it's like I've always wanted to see a horror movie. They had like an organ <laughs> score, you know, like an organ to me, like you think is that would associated come with, more. with like a horror movie. Yeah, there's either the violin, which I like the Insidious movies because right. it did the screeching violins, and this one does the organ, you know. Um, so yeah, I think he also did uh, the Matrix. Don okay. Davis is the guy who brought us the Matrix soundtrack. Uh, next week we're gonna watch a movie that is chosen by Michaela. Michaela, what are we gonna watch next week? I'm bringing Halloween yes, season. Halloween season, so I'm bringing something that is long overdue uh, and one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, we are finally going to watch Phantasm. Spoilers! <laughs> one of your favorite. Well, now we know. I've talked about it at length on this show before, <laughs> you know, so everyone yes, knows. Know. Oh, this well, is this where is, this is going to be a discussion. Wait, yeah. Some of us haven't seen it. I am the only one here who has never okay. seen it. Sean, yeah. Sean, you saw it at the drive-in a number drive-in. of years ago, right? Yes, five years five ago years. to the day. Yeah, almost exactly. <laughs> yeah, as uh-huh. we were recording this, yeah. five years ago to the day. And I see this movie like every year. Me so, too. I oh, watch boy. sometimes multiple <laughs> times a year. Yeah. Me too. Mm. All right. So uh, next week, Phantasm. Finally, the classic Phantasm on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Want to tune in? And until then, the basement is going dark.